Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. I know for a long time I've been telling a lot of you that one day, one of these videos we're going to make a router table. Well, we're finally getting around to making a router table. And we're going to make a good quality router table. We're not going to make the whole stand thing with all the drawers and everything. There's lots of plans for those online. Um, we're going to make a little bit more simple, but you're going to be able to start using this one, you know, probably by the end of a weekend, you could probably make this. It's going to be that quick. So the first thing we're going to do is make the legs. This is probably going to be a two or three part series. And the first thing we're going to do is make the stand for the, the router to sit on. I want to give you a little bit of an idea what we're going to be doing so that you know as we go along what parts we're doing. The first thing we're going to make is the stand and it will just be, it's going to have some, I'm exaggerating a little bit, it's going to have some diagonal legs like that and there will be a, a skirt at the top and another sort of a brace down in here and the legs will come down like that. Now on the side it's also going to have a little bit of a um, a um, the legs are going to be tapered on the sides as well just a little bit and the top eventually when we get to the top the top is actually going to be 24 inches by 32 and the reason we picked that that's kind of become a standard in in uh, floor standing uh, routers. There, there is no real standard but that's sort of what's become uh, a quasi standard if you will. So and that will fit on top so the legs will also have a little bit of a on the side and there's going to be uh, of course some bracing on there as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the router. This is only a five degree it's not that much, but it's enough to give the legs a bit more stability. You know, we could build just straight up and down. You could do that. It doesn't take long to do. You can build straight up and down. The reason I don't like to do that is when you get a little bit more of an angle, you get much more stability. And that's what we're going to do. And we're woodworkers, aren't we? We can't just do something simple. What I'm working with for lumber for this I went to the lumber store, I just got construction grade material. This is just what we call one inch by four inch and they're about eight feet long. These are two inch by three inch and they'll, they're going to be the legs and they're also eight feet long. So the first thing I need to do is cut off this two by three material and we're going to make this about three feet tall so I'm going to take this over to the sliding miter and we'll cut off some three foot lengths. Now, when we did the drawing, we, I said we were going to be at 5 degrees on one angle and 5 degrees on the other. And I'm at the table saw now, and I've already set my table saw blade at a 5 degree angle, so that'll compensate for one. And I've also set my miter gauge, so instead of being at 90 degrees, it's off by 5 degrees as well. When I'm making these legs, because I've got two opposite sides, I need to cut two of them at one angle on the miter gauge and two of them at the opposite. Okay, just so you can see a little bit closer, there's the 90 degree mark, there's five degrees on one side and there is five degrees on, where is it? There's five degrees on the other side. So I'm gonna make two cuts there and two cuts there.
I know some of you will ask, why didn't I cut that on the sliding miter? I could have just as easily done it on the sliding miter. Um, whether I set up the table saw or the sliding miter doesn't really matter. This just seemed handier to me. Now that I've cut all of the angles on all of the legs, the next very important thing to do is to cut all of the legs to the same length. And you can see that I've got them, all of them, they all come to a point, it's a little hard to see, but they all come to a point right in there. So I'm going to gang cut them to make sure they're all perfect. And I'm going to take them to the sliding miter and make sure that these line up perfectly right in here. And then cut them all to the same length. Now I'm still at the table saw, I've wound the blade down, but I want to mark every one of these legs that we just cut. And I've got a little uh, black felt marking pen. The best way, I still want to make any mistakes on this, so there's going to be, that's going that way and back. So this is going to be the front, and this will be the right side. So I'll always know where that leg is. Okay, it took me a minute to find the right one. There's my front left. So I just want to mark that in the same area. Front left. And the last two will be towards the back. I'm just sitting up here on the floor because it's easier. And I've got my workbench. I've got a board across here with the legs up against it. And what I'm going to do now is I want to cut the top, uh, this brace across here, and I want this to be 25 inches sort of from point to point. And so I'm just going to go, but I also need to put a little bit of an angle on it, a five degree angle, so that it'll be flat on the top, because the top apron here is going to sit just a little bit proud of the legs here, because we're going to be gluing that. So we'll go to the table saw, we'll cut the five degrees off the top, uh, and then we'll go to the sliding miter and cut the sides, and we'll do the front and the back at the same, so they're exactly the same. I've just made a mark on there. I'm just going to cut that five degrees on the sliding miter. The other thing that you could do to check to make sure that it's square, and I've just set everything up now, is just measure corner to corner. Even though it's not square, it should still line up. And that's 45. Yeah, that's perfect. So this is already, it lines up uh, this side is equal to that side. So if it was a square, it, you would move it back and forth and you do the same thing with this. You could move it one way or the other to make these line up. So uh, that's all I have to do is glue and screw now because I've already countersunk these. I just made a light mark on there so I can see where to put the glue. It holds a little bit. Okay, I just flipped these over and we'll do the matching side on here. Okay, I'm ready to put the rear part on now, the two rear legs. And I just transferred the mark up from the lower one. I used my square and then because I've got the five, ang five degree angle set on there, I could just use that to square that off. So, And I even cleaned out my glue nozzle.
What I need to do now, I'm going to cut the tops here and they're 20 inches and these are going to be 24 inches but I'm also going to have to cut I don't know if I really need to do that but I am anyway going to cut the five degrees off the top so I'm going to go and do that and then we'll come back and we'll be able to put these two on finishes the base for our router table and it's pretty simple to put together. We've made it a little bit more complicated by putting some angles. You can see we've got angles on all sides on it uh, but it's going to be super strong and it's not going to be tippy. You're not going to be able to push this over like sometimes you can with a, a vertical piece. This, is, this one is going to slide or push. So that's one of the advantages of having something angled like this. And you could use this base for all kinds of different things too. Maybe drill presses, uh, planers, all sorts of things. So join us next time when we work on the top for our router table. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.